Hi Tenfold, it's Jackie here from the East Rand. Um, I've been really struggling with this life science question. Uh, could you please just check it out and help me out? Thanks guys, bye. The graph below shows the changes in the concentration of hormones in the blood. Why? We'll get to that now. Of a woman during a menstrual cycle. Okay, now. In the blood, why? Because hormones are chemical messengers. Okay, that's what they are. They're chemical messengers. They can't do anything. They're chemical messengers that are released by endocrine glands. Only endocrine glands can release um, hormones. So they're chemical messengers released by endocrine glands directly into the blood. Why? Because endocrine glands are ductless. Okay. If there's a duct, then it's exocrine glands that release the fluids. So chemical messengers released by endocrine glands go into the blood and they have a target organ and they cause the target organ or they stimulate the target organ to perform a function. Okay, so bearing all of this in mind, this is incredibly important. You need to understand this. Hormones are chemical messengers. They're released by endocrine glands that are ductless, so directly into the bloodstream. Okay, and where do they go? They have a specific target organ that they head for and they cause or stimulate that target organ to perform a function. All right, it's important you understand that. Okay, now, let's see here. We've got hormone levels in the blood in arbitrary units. Remember, this is our y-axis, this is our x-axis. Um, this is going to be your dependent variable. Okay, and this time in days is your independent variable it is the focus it is how everything works now look here you have your estrogen okay remember estrogen is released by your follicle your actually your graphene follicle all right the estrogen is released so that increases your follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the development of that follicle and estrogen also increases luteinizing hormone so all of this, and then at day 14, what do we have? We have ovulation. And ovulation, we now have this little ovum that's ready for fertilization. What happens now is the graphene follicle, once it bursts and releases, you know what? Hang on, let's just do this. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, all right, watch. I, I need for you to pay attention. All right, it starts. We have our follicle stimulating hormone. Okay, what does it do? It stimulates the development of primary, okay, I'm going to, I don't have a hell of a lot of time, so you're going to have to just bear with me here, the primary follicle. And what does the primary follicle do? It undergoes mitosis, and what happens then, we end up with our Graphene follicle, which I'm going to abbreviate now from now on to GF. Graphene follicle, which contains the ovum. And that's what we want. We want this little ovum because we want to fertilize it. All right, now, our graphene follicle, all right, what does it do? It releases estrogen. Remember, O for estrogen. O for ovum and ovulation, okay? And what does estrogen do? It stimulates um, the release of folly, uh, at least of, uh, of luteinizing hormone. What am I doing here? Of the luteinizing hormone. That's why in the graph, the luteinizing hormone goes high. So estrogen increases. It causes the luteinizing hormone to now go zoops up, okay? What does the luteinizing hormone do? It um, controls the conversion 
of the graphene follicle into the corpus luteum. But we first have something else that must happen. This estrogen and the luteinizing hormone, by day 14, they are all at a maximum. Okay, and what does that do? Where am I? That causes ovulation, and we now get our little ovum ready here for fertilization. Okay, so once the, the, the graphene follicle has now released this little egg, this little ovum, okay, it's gone, out. Luteinizing hormone controls the conversion of the graphene follicle into the corpus luteum. What does the corpus luteum do? Okay, the corpus luteum releases progesterone. So now we've dealt with our estrogen, which is released by the graphene follicle. We now have the corpus luteum releasing the progesterone. Okay, so where do we go from here? The progesterone, first of all, inhibits the release of follicle stimulating hormone. It stops it. You've got this little guy here, or this little ovum, actually little girl, that needs to be fertilized. Okay? You don't want more, more ovums to be released. You want to first deal with this one and fertilize it. And when you've dealt with this little ovum and fertilization has taken place, because that's what you're preparing for, this is what all the prep is. You're preparing for that little guy. You don't want more follicles stimulating, or you want more follicles. Okay, so releases the progesterone. It inhibits follicle stimulating hormone. And what else does it do? It prepares and maintains the endometrium. Okay, why? Because you want the endometrium for M. Plantation. Now, first, you've got to need fertilization to take place. So, that is why you are preparing and maintaining the endometrium. All right, now, watch this. What happens then? No fertilization. Okay, doesn't happen, doesn't take place. And this is a mess because the body says, ah, I wanted that little guy to be, or the little egg cell to be fertilized, the ovum to be fertilized. No fertilization took place. Yeah, oh shame, poor little guy. So we then have the corpus luteum, because it's no longer needed, degenerates. Okay, and as it degenerates, it therefore stops releasing. Um, progesterone and so therefore that progesterone level is going to decrease I mean like that makes sense doesn't it okay so what happens with that decrease okay what happens the endometrium is no longer maintained okay so menstruation happens so now you have menstruation because why must you keep this endometrium there was no fertilization that's why the endometrium was there in the first place so what happens now this decrease in progesterone means that your follicle stimulating hormone is no longer inhibited okay so what happens Comes follicle stimulating hormone is now stimulated, or at least the pituitary is stimulated, and it releases follicle stimulating hormone, and the whole process happens again. Graphene follicle, which then releases estrogen, which stimulates the release of follicle stimulation, I mean luteinizing hormone, ovulation takes place. And 
follicle stimulating hormone, I mean the, the graphene follicle develops into corpus luteum, that releases progesterone, gets that endometrium ready, and it stops the follicle stimulating hormone from working. No fertilization, corpus luteum degenerates, and what happens? Well, endometrium breaks, it just no longer needs to be there, so it breaks up and we have menstruation, and the follicle stimulating hormone is then inhibited, uh, I mean, is then released. So that is what happens here. That is why we have this whole process, okay? Ovulation, because of the luteinizing hormone. Estrogen, because of the graphene follicle. Progesterone, because of the corpus luteum. Okay, people, now let's see what questions are asked. Explain why the concentration of follicle-stimulating hormone in the blood increases after day one. Well, that is, it, 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 as I said, what do we have? Corpus luteum degenerates, therefore decrease in progesterone. Therefore, what happens? You've got a decrease in the, the progesterone and follicle stimulating hormone can be released because it's no longer been inhibited. Okay, no more inhibition. And what does the follicle stimulating hormone do? It stimulates development of primary follicle and it's going to be the new one so that's awesome all right next state what happens to the estrogen level in the blood when the LH level increases well people just look at the graph as the LH level increases the estrogen level increases I'm not even going to write that down it just I'm going to put there uh, um, blah, blah, blah. it increases okay Explain why estrogen level decreases. Okay, I'm running out of time. It decreases simply because the, fo because the graphene follicle has now released the egg cell. It's empty, all right? And luteinizing hormone converts it into what? It converts it into a corpus luteum, which is now going to produce progesterone. Uh, blah, 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 progesterone. 